Uh, this is a presentation and a talk about some work we've been doing at Aura, which is the institutional repository for the University of Oxford, to connect our Hyrex repository to uh, Fedora 6 and ultimately to OCFL. Um, again, uh, a quick idea about who Aura is. Oxford is the Oxford University Research Archive. Uh, we have um, uh, about 280,000 digital research items. We call them objects. Uh, that's monographs, theses, data sets, working papers. Gives you a good idea of what we have. We take almost any digital research output the university sends us up to 256 gig in size. That's what we're we're built or we're building to be structured to do. We currently have 110,000 objects that have public binary files. Um, we receive about 1,200 new mediated deposits each month. We get slightly more deposits than that, but we have to mediate 1,200 a month. So our review team, as you can imagine from that, are reasonably busy, uh, especially because most mediated deposit requires two or more rounds of mediation, uh, depending on where objects sit within publication cycles. So we have quite a heavy uh, need both for long-term preservation, but we also have objects that stay within active life cycles for quite a long time. Um, Digital preservation is obviously a core cool part of what the Bodleian tries to do. Um, we've been around as an institution for 400 years looking after books, and we'd like to be able to look after digital content for that kind of length of time too. Um, so we don't obviously know what that's going to be involved. We No one knows how to look after a digital file for that long. But uh, the Bodleian has its own um, digital preservation microservices team who've built uh, an amazing standard of tools for us. Uh, to go and look at uh, fixed file validation, virus checking, file format sustainability, and various other things. And what they want is access to our content on an OCFL layer. So the big aim of our digital preservation service is to get our content out of Hyrax, where it's currently stored, and into OCFL. Um, and to do this, we want to use Fedora 6. We've chosen Fedora 6 as our manage la management layer uh to create and manage those objects on disk uh partly because of the community uh partly because of the documented api and also because just of features like the transaction management and messaging um they're all really useful to us so given this given this uh, need to um create objects in ocfl given this need to use uh or this choice to use fedora 6 to do it we now have to connect hyrax to Fedora 6. So what we've done and what we've written is, uh, and what we've, we're have we making public at the moment, is Fedora 6.client, which is a, a Rails layer to abstract the Fedora 6 API. Um, very simply, it is a Rails gem that abstracts the Fedora 6 API and allows you to create, access, and manage content in Fedora 6. Um, it is uh, at GitHub. If you do a search for Fedora 6 Client, you should be able to find it. It's on the Bodleian. It's in the Bodleian's GitHub space. It's available under the MIT license. Um, it's currently in uh, a develop. So it's currently on a develop branch. It will be released to QA very soon in our internal structures. Uh, we'll be using Git flow logic. So at some point, a release will come through. It's effectively, I think, at version 0.6. So there are, and I'll talk about it at the end, some things that it can't do. We've built it to do the job we want it to do. Um, but uh, we do want to get to, to full coverage of the Fedora API. Um, at the moment, and I'm going to risk the wrath of all the gods by giving a live demo, um, it allows for our, uh, the creation of, of uh, and indeed the deletion, although we won't be doing that, of objects. Um, and we've also got it working for direct upload of binary files, as well as binary file uploading via um, external referencing, which means that our digital preservation service, and indeed the Fedora 6 box, can be completely decoupled from our Hyrax service. And this, again, was a really powerful uh, one reason why we chose Fedora 6, but also uh, one of the one of the really important things about this is that the digital preservation service will not just be for Aura. It will be used for other systems, other teams who don't use, well, they would, who don't use Ruby, but who also don't use Hyrax. So uh, being able to fully decouple it is quite a useful feature. 
Um, I've added this just for code's sake, but the basic structure follows the Fedora 6 API. If you're looking at the code, you have uh, a config configuration and then basic classes to handle the various entities that exist within the Fedora 6 API. Um, uh, the other thing I'm going to talk about before I give a little demo is what we're calling the Aura DPS class. This is a Hyrax class um, to integrate Hyrax with Fedora 6. So it does the, the bit that picks a Hyrax object up and sends it, preserves it through the API. It does contain quite a lot of Aura business logic. So it's a little bit messy for release right now, but it is available freely both in speech as in speech and beer uh, on request. Um, um, and it will require one of the things that it requires is a local method to export a Hyrax object as serialized metadata. One of the things that I should do, or I suppose I should stress at this point, is that we really care about the object in OCFL on disk. That means we are not using Fedora 6 to store metadata within the object as triples. All object metadata is, uh, for us, saved as a binary file. And we are serializing our, our binary files as JSON uh, and sometimes as XML, um, uh, our metadata in that format as binary files so that they can be managed in OCFL and so that any future um, software that accesses that OCFL layer does not have to understand Fedora. Um, uh, we're building in that independence from the start. And it's something that Fedora is quite good at providing for us. So um, uh, this is uh, some usage examples. I think probably the best thing to do at the moment would be to stop sharing. And does anyone have any questions while I'm just setting up a demo? No? Uh, I'm going to hope that uh, it's... Well, if you've got the time, I would like to ask you um, uh, something. Yes. Um, uh, when I first um, when I wrote my first application of uh, still Hydra, not some Vera, mm -hmm. um, I found uh, I uh, wrote some ingesting clients myself using Active Fedora. And I yes. found that very, very easy. Uh, to use so I'm we still have some legacy uh, Fedora 4 repositories and are still uh, using um, active Fedora to 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 ingest files or, or so on yes. and and then is it uh, some some way the um, um, a similar direction or is it um, has it very very new exciting features apart from uh, communicating with Fedora 6? Or can you say, say about say something about the differences? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think probably if I show you what an object looks like, uh, yeah, then yeah. You, you get an idea. Okay. So the 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 idea is not to use Active Fedora in any way, shape, or form. Um, this yeah. is an Aura object. Um, it's uh, a working paper where we discussed things before. This looks. Can people see something that looks like basically the normal Sanvera? You can see it has three binary files um, for complicated reasons. It has some metadata, it has some metadata that's not filled in, it has a history and various other things. Now, this one I'd already preserved in the DPS. Uh, and it preserves the DPS simply using the UUID. Yeah, yeah I see. Um, mm -hmm. Which gives us a consistent location for where that object is. And this is simply, this container contains just a series of binary files. Those binary files are identified by their... Mm -hmm. Uh, persistent identifiers and we've got the three binary files and then we've got two metadata files yeah. a public version and a non-public version and it's as simple as that uh, to run the code you'll have to trust me this is uh, another object um, that is currently not stored in the dps and if i do that copy the uuid and uuid equals to Got save UID. Um, the vast majority of actually doing the save is loading it in Active Fedora. Uh, and if we do that now, we can see the object's been preserved uh, fully uh, with everything, uh, with all, all its com components intact. Um, and the other thing that the code does uh, is it understands versioning let me just move this further uh, so this object has been updated i've changed the title 
Um, and we have the old preservation version here. If I go and get that. EID equals. And we do a secondary save of that object. Uh, not much changes if you refresh this page because we haven't made any new binary files available. Um, although I'm not even sure last modified updates for complicated, complicated reasons. But um, if we look at versions, no. There we go. It now knows that there's multiple versions of the metadata.json file. And it will actually understand that the, the, yes, here we go. It's finally also understood that the uh, core object now has multiple versions. So we're able to use that um, within our service to go and pull back an object from a given point in time. And our idea uh, within Hyrax is that we'll save objects when they reach a certain workflow state and we'll preserve the objects at that point in time uh, and we can reload them or use them in other services. Um, it's worth noting for users of Fedora 6 that if you do ask for a version within about a second and a half of creating one, it doesn't always give it to you, which is an interesting uh, race condition in practice. So that's the code. And uh, to go back to stop sharing and to go back to sharing my main uh, presentation. Uh, and double click doesn't work. Um, this is this is our usage, and uh, it's resume slideshow. There we go. Uh, in Aura terms, it's as simple as loading up the UUID, uh, initiating the connection, and then calling save. But uh, if you look at the left-hand panel, it's reasonably straightforward. Um, we found that we need to create a transaction to wrap things in. Uh, if we don't wrap things within a transaction, then every single call gets put inside its own folder which we didn't want and using explicitly the versions option didn't give us quite the directory structure we wanted to either we're very keen on reducing the complexity of our document of our directory structures as much as possible so um yeah it gives you an idea of of what you can do with this ruby code that's already released um we aim to have full coverage of the fedora 6 api pretty soon um, we are definitely seeking partners to understand understand other use cases and to broaden the scope. We are very interested in talking to anyone who uh, has worked on Samvira's Valkyrie uh, or is looking at the Samvira Valkyrie um, work. We haven't written this in Valkyrie and we haven't written this in Valkyrie because we're on Fedora 2.5.1 and we need to get it working. Um, but uh, we'd be very interested in talking to people there. Um, and I've written a kind of little list of shame of things that it currently can't do, um, uh, if you're familiar with the API, but most of those would be reasonably straightforward. Uh, we already, for example, uh, the code can already get metadata property, RDF metadata properties. Uh, it just can't send them at the moment, but that uh, that's something we're definitely looking to do. So beyond that um, is uh, get in touch um, either with me directly on GitHub uh or um via email uh, you can email me which is thomas.robell at bodleian or the aura dev which will get you the aura dev team uh and i think i'll stop there was that 15 Thank minutes you. was it slightly longer you, you're good you still have eight minutes so we've got lots still of have eight minutes oh eight i'm really minutes. sorry yeah. i uh, i i then managed to tear through everything in a blinding hurry um uh in that case i should probably give another indication that this has been this approach for uploading to fedora uh has been very performant um and um we we've managed to get 256 gig files across um not uh not quick quick uh, 25 minutes or so but uh, that's reasonable within our spec and time frame for uploading and preserving a 256 gigabyte file it's scaled. We've run this on up to 100,000 objects, I think we tested, and about four terabytes of disk space. So um, we're reasonably confident with this approach. And um, uh, yeah, we're really, we're, we're really hopeful in using it. We are looking to go to production at the start of next year uh, to actually have the DPS live at that point. 
um, where it will fill in the two really big gaps in Fedora 4 and Hyrax at the moment. And those big gaps are um, metadata preservation within the Fedora 4 6 is poor in preservation terms. Uh, the metadata is kept inside the mode shape database or inside Postgres, and it's not, not well stored um, from a preservation point of view, but also our ability to version digital objects. And for us, the ability to retrieve a point in time version for the metadata and indeed the collected metadata and binary files is a very powerful drive for us. So that's what we've done. At this point, I think I will hand back because once you've rushed through, then rushing back through is not a good idea. Um, but I'm very happy to take questions. That's awesome. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, we've got some time for questions if anybody has any. Happy to take them live or in the chat, whatever is easier. Yes, I've got another question here. Thank you. That uh, sounds really exciting, and a little bit of what I what I'm looking for, especially um, uh, to manage uh, side loading uh, issues and uh, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. As I understood at the, at the moment, you uh, you're only storing files and no metadata. Uh, so when uh, anybody would like to use uh, these Fedora object within uh, Hyrex somewhere or what else, mm -hmm. um, they, they had to be written an adapter or yes. something like that. Mm -hmm. So it, the implicit in this and implicit is it. I, I, I hear him speaking to a subset of the Sanvera community, which is anyone who's been using Fedora 4, uh, active Fedora. In order to understand an object stored in Fedora 4 and active Fedora, you need active Fedora. Or you need yeah. something that's recreated active yeah, Fedora. Yeah, 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 yeah. We choose not to go down that route. So yeah. instead, we are we are simply going to be persisting our metadata as text and yes you uh well as 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 a serialization so you do need a serializing serialization deserialization routine um in order to do that uh that for us is by design because it allows us to choose the format in which things will be serialized for long-term preservation um and uh that that fits very well with our kind of metadata preservation policies that we want to document very clearly what our metadata is, where it is and how it works. So a key part of our digital preservation service is that in the storage route of the OCFL layer, there is a document describing exactly what an aura object is, how it looks like on disk. This metadata file has these values, these correspond to this, and we fully documented our data model out there in a Hyrax and Samvera agnostic way, because okay. we don't know what this data is going to become. So, okay, thank you. Um, I know a message from Emily about archival groups. Um, and uh, I would say that took us a long while to get archival groups right. Uh, and indeed we had to do some, it's not some tricks, but we had to do some things that weren't necessarily obvious in order to make them work for us. Um, I think that probably took us about a week of, of going through and just by trial and error, um, working out the correct sequence of commands. The key to that actually is wrapping things up in a transaction, but not using version creation uh, was key to us there. Awesome. Anything else? Yeah, David. Yeah, thank you. I just want to, uh, if you can a, a bit uh, elaborate on what you said, or just said. So, so the reason you use transactions for archival groups is that uh, you don't want to create multiple versions when you're creating the the first version of the object. If I get it right, is it is it like that? Um, so this is one we're demonstrating with a file system might be easier but on this laptop i probably can't do it what happens when you ask fedora to create a version and you're running an archival group mode is that it will create a version folder and it will put it in a working directory in the headless uh in the working head mode but for every sub call within that version it will then create a separate subdirectory so you get an additional layer of subdirectories you didn't necessarily want in the final version. So you don't 
actually save yourself anything by doing that and so we found i don't want to sound complaining because the fedora dev team have been fantastic with us but largely undocumented that if you start the whole thing wrap it in a transaction and save it then you get one version per folder per transaction which is a lot better for us does that answer your question yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Because we, we are also working with, with archival groups in this really similar way because we are com, uh, combining um, uh, the metadata as XML in, in the yep. archival group with some, some files. And I'm just thinking about what is better because I don't see such a problem about creating more than one version when creating the archival group. But yes, yeah, it's, it's true. It might be more convenient to have only the one. Only the one so our, our our key driver here and this is this is again an, a, a very techie comment um one of the problems we have with fedora 6 but in fact we have with a lot of um ocfl structures and this is an ocfl problem is that using rsync on deeply nested directory structures is a pain and actually being able to use standard file system tooling when you have very deeply nested complex directories um starts to break down so we are trying as best we can to limit the number of directories that are created it's not necessarily important to us that um uh a version in ocfl corresponds to a version in aura anything semantic we would have we we will be using point in time versioning for that but it's much more important that we don't have 50 60 version directories uh, for every single post call we've made on an object, that would be, that's likely to cause complications for us. Okay, thank you. In that case, thank you all very much. Thank you all for your patience. And um, yes. Thank you.